your art is so rooted in participation and in fostering community. What, what have been the particular challenges for you creating in this time or um, what has been particularly interesting for you uh, to see your work in relation to this time? To be honest, I was very lucky because a lot of institutions, uh, private and public, uh, highlighted very much my practice in these past months. And uh, they realized something that was also important for me, that, that I, I don't do only performative event, but I work on participatory uh, modality uh, from every degree you can approach a community or a group. So actually my work increased a lot. So compared with a lot of very dear friends and colleagues, I cannot complain. I, I'm plenty of work and uh, my um, uh, advisor, uh, uh, I, I, I've been seen as an advisor and I, I'm, I'm also asked for creating a uh, specific program to run online because I always worked on a platform like uh, this one, Zoom or I don't know others, there are so many right now running. And it was for me in the past a way to create more connection with a wider uh, spectrum of potential participants. But now what most of people are doing is just to move uh, their own program online. No? And this is not sorting very good effect on people because the language is completely different and also the, the way to receive information and process information. So I think it's very important to understand and work on this new modality that we are facing these problems. So of course, for uh, still time, we will have to face this situation and create new narratives and new contents and also a different way to be in contact with wider public. It's something that I'm addressing a lot. I always did, actually. And um, the project with the soundtracks, but also my workshops online. So even the School of Narrative Dance uh, remotely, it's something that I already did in the past. And th these are very requested right now. So uh, that's mm -hmm. how I, I, I'm trying to give my contribution and, and be helpful because I guess that in this moment, artists should be really figuring out our times, how to be really site specific and not just wondering when everything will land because of course it will land, but not tomorrow, sadly. So it's, I feel as a responsibility to produce new content and to understand also the kind of experiences we are asking our public to, to make. Um, at least from my point of view, I work with the people for people and my structural work is based on participation. So for me, it's mandatory to interrogate myself on such topics. Mm. So um, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of your work has involved uh, in the past people coming together on site, like bodies in a space. Yeah. And that body aspect was really important, but you adapted because of the pandemic. And one of the expressions of this adaptation is what you came up with for Europe's Kitchen um, in Ljubljana. And um, we, it began from this idea of um, a self-portrait in sound. And can you talk a bit more about this idea and, uh, and what, you, what you envisaged with it? Sure. Uh, sound is a very powerful um, language and uh, underestimated sometimes or even not perceived properly. But when people get in uh, touch with this uh, more ephemeral, let's say, material, uh, they immediately understand how it's part of our daily life, but also our imaginary. I, I always face it um, big surprises from the part of the audience and the, the participants themselves in using uh, not the image no, or not the body. I'm very well known for the School of Narrative Dance projects, which, which that involve a lot of 
course, gathering of people, physical gathering, and also lots of, uh, of connection, also physical connection, especially when it comes to nonverbal languages and we use the body, obviously. But on the other hand, there are so many uh, other ways you can uh, get people in touch and you can generate a narrative. And definitely sound was one of the uh, more... Uh, efficient for me and this idea to make a soft participation as I call it which is very different from uh, jumping in one of our school of narrative dance project where you have to attend several workshops uh, in, in situ and um, there are other people in the same space and you share a lot of things for sure but on the other hand we preclude an, another part of potential uh, participants to get involved. The sound is something pretty easy for the technology that we have here because nowadays everybody or a lot of people has have an, an iPhone, a phone in general or a mobile so they can record easily something. We record the messages every day. Uh, millions of people do that every day. And imagining even people in solitude, the people that are alone in their own space and maybe they are relying on songs and music very dear to their personal memory, but also their collective memories. On the other uh, uh, way, you can en engage people in making a sort of portrait, recording and uh, showing to us the sound that surrounds and uh, their everyday life, their routine from the very beginning in the morning until the night and the sounds of their houses, the voice of their friends, their own voices when it comes to the case. So there are so many approaches possible and this is a, such a wide range of possibilities that definitely you can tell a lot of stories and when I talk about different narratives and different contents. I'm also talking about that. So there are different ways and there must be uh, places where to address that. So what we received through the open call and the great work that was done by um, all of you is a great portrait of memory, wishes, frustration, uh, um, dear, dear things, or very, very poetic and uh, simple uh, uh, suggestion made just by the sound. Uh, you can be anonymous, you, can, uh, you, you don't need to use other features of yours. And so if you don't want to appear, if you don't want to show up your body, so these are all possibility for another kind of public. And that's what we did with uh, this sound project, which in my opinion was very fortunate project because not, uh, I won't underestimate in this uh, historical moment how difficult it is for people to think about uh, such subtle poetry and while we are facing a very difficult uh, situation in terms of political and economical and of course also the healthy issues that are related with the pandemic. Um, yeah, so um, mm -hmm. participation can be declinated in so many dif different ways and I guess this one is very powerful for the uh, because it's immediate it's very genuine and very uh, spontaneous mm. what was also very interesting in your approach that this idea and uh, this idea of who gets to participate there was something in your methodology where you will from the beginning it was very clear to you that we had to have many different languages in which this open call was made yes. and we had to really reach out as far as possible into different communities who may be at home in Ljubljana and uh, and this idea of extending uh, the invitation to as many people as possible was really central to your idea from the beginning which um, was so moving it is, it is definitely. Uh, for me, the entire piece of art starts with the open call because the open call is the m most sensitive part of the entire project. It's not so relevant how many people will join. We, we are happy to have one, 10, 10,000, one million, whatever, because every single individual is extremely precious and, and his or her voice is extremely valuable. 
But for me, on political and social terms, it's absolutely mandatory for my, from my point of view to make feel people ask it. And of course, you can, this is the base of the participation in the way I intend it. And it's crucial that people are asked in their own languages and they are not stigmatized for speaking different languages in a place. This also allows us to make a very interesting map of the, the field and to understand all the circulation of information that is in there, in Ljubljana in this case specifically. But for me, it's a very, very intense moment and very serious because it's my statement and also my commitment uh, towards people and 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 this is uh, the base at the core of my project so once we have invited everybody or at least we have made all the efforts possible to make people feel uh, feel invited then we can proceed mm. and as part of that effort to try and make as many people feel invited as possible. Um, you, Eva Maria, you actually went on behalf of the project to Ljubljana and literally went out in the streets to, um, to ask people and to try and, um, yeah, get, collect these, these self-portraits. Can you say a little bit about that experience of being in the city and inviting people to take part in uh, Marinella's artwork? Sure. So, um, yes, I went to Ljubljana and spent three days in September in the city, inviting people also personally to take part and let us know what Ljubljana sounds like for them and what sounds they are surrounded by in their everyday life. And the reason for that was um, that we felt like we reached out to a lot of people through flyers and social media. But I think during these times, there's also... Um, a lot of um, consciousness about how important an actual physical encounter is. Um, and that's also what I realized going to Ljubljana, how happy and open people were to just be invited personally and to talk and tell about their city and themselves. Um, and so what I did was um, to just, um, yeah, run around in Ljubljana, ask people on the streets, um, not just in the city center, but also in the outskirts of the city, which was um, important as well. Um, and there was several um, options for people to um, participate. So they could either sing something for me, which some of them actually did. Um, then I met some musicians on the street who played um, a song for me. But people also told me a lot about how Ljubljana sounds for them. And um, it was interesting because a lot of people um, connect Ljubljana with their river and also told me that there was this certain kind of flow um, that is so special about the city and that I could really sense myself too. Um, then a lot of people really felt connected to their cathedral bells. Um, so that was also something a lot of people wanted to share. The river, the bells of the cathedral and the bustling of the market, um, which are all at the heart of the city. Um, and so, um, so this was what came to mind for a lot of people. But I also realized that this question what, what sounds do you connect with Ljubljana and what does the city sound like for you? It sounds so easy, but it's actually a very personal um, and very difficult question. Um, so some people also asked for some more time to think um, and to then write us. And of course, not all of them did in the end, um, but I think it opened up a nice encounter and made people think about themselves and their city um, and I think this invitation itself um, led to quite beautiful um, thoughts. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's true, this, this, this sense of sound is very intimate, Yes, um, becomes clear from what you both say. And uh, I'm thinking about that moment, Marinella, when you got all these individual, unique, personal sounds and began your process then of making um, the, the composition that you did. How is that for you? How does the process work then? 
Well, I, I must say that it's extremely moving sometimes. And uh, it wasn't the, the first time I imagined a, a soundtrack of a CD, but definitely this one in Ljubljana was extremely beautiful. And in certain, many aspects, one of the most moving for me. Uh, you feel that you are in contact when you receive these sounds and I have to process them. I have to take care of this personal memory, uh, also delicate aspect of intimacy, as we were saying. And by the way, Eva did an amazing, amazing uh, uh, work and I must thank her uh, uh, again, also publicly. Um, but this intimacy must be preserved and people must be enhanced. And uh, I, uh, first of all, it's mandatory for me and the composer, uh, and in this case, the composer was an Italian uh, one, uh, Emiliano Branda, who is very specialized in uh, movie soundtrack. And uh, it was mandatory, so it always is, that all the, the sounds are uh, represented and nobody is left uh, behind because every single sound, including the silence, when sometimes even people send you si seconds of silence, this means, means a lot. So when somebody gives you a part of them, uh, this is such a precious thing. So, um, so first of all, uh, the, the first the initial uh, phase is the one to understand the one when we understand the mood of the if there is a general mood that we can uh, um, if we can realize. Sometimes it's uh, the the the, um, the the atmosphere are very very different. Other times you can find some sort of lines. Uh, like red lines between the, the different people, people that, of course, I don't know. So it's even more important for me to take care of, of the airport. And uh, once we realize that this um, precious material will work very well as an um, electronic piece or classical piece or whatever, we, we start making the, the structures. We use every single sound in multiple ways. First of all, the sound itself, as it is, rough as it was sent, without uh, not very much uh, work or editing on it. Then we use it as a note, so we understand the, the tone and we try to equalize and use this as material for our uh, composition. And Oh, another important aspect in the sounds are the rhythms and the times. Uh, if, if generally speaking, it's very fast or very, uh, very slow, or it can suggest a uh, movement during the composition, which often is the case, and it was the case also uh, for Ljubljana soundtrack. So we try to use all aspects uh, from the poetical and more intimacy mood uh, to the very technical aspect to use this sound as the only uh, letters of this alphabet that we are going to use for speaking the language at the end. Yeah, that's amazing. And um, so we then received this composed piece and as for some, for me, for instance, who um, hadn't got, hadn't had any sense of what was coming. It was an incredible moment um, to listen to this and to feel like you started to go on a journey through this place. Yes. Um, it, it was very moving and very lively. And um, you, you really have the sense that um, on the one hand, the, the piece tells you something, but on the other hand, you have this freedom also to imagine with the piece. Yes. And um, I think that that, that, that worked really um, brilliantly in the composition. Um, Eva, I was just thinking, uh, for you as somebody who ha was quite close to the material before it even went to Marinella, to, to have that composition come, uh, what, what was that moment like for you? Uh, for me, it's like a, a spectator. I'm always super surprised uh, at the very end because also when we work, we proceed for pieces and mm. fragments, uh, sometimes even longer fragments, uh, including more sounds that uh, 
that suggest us they can work very well accordingly, accordingly. And then the tempo is also another important factor. But at the very end, I just uh, uh, wash my mind and I have like, I'm like a blank uh, canvas and I allow all these colors uh, to, to, to make the composition. So I have the same, exactly the same impression that, that you described bef just uh, before. So, oh, wow. So oh, the collectively come to me and with this incredible uh, strength and uh, I'm always extremely excited because until the very very end I really don't understand how it will be mm -hmm. and I also try to keep distance sometimes to the material and then get in again with the composer so I, I try to have this balance I try to withdraw also the presence of the artist because I don't want to be abusive. I don't want to decide too many things. I prefer that the material is, uh, speaks for itself. And, um, and sometimes as artists, I think we have to take a step back. So when I think that I'm starting creating too much uh, and not just interacting, but, but overlapping too much I take a step back so that that's why until the very very end I don't know exactly how it will sound mm. it's very attentive your process it's very respectful um, and very conscious of the way we need to negotiate our relationships with each other um, even in creating um, that's that's very interesting to hear how how you're so conscious at every stage well, I, I must admit that I learned this from people. So I learned uh, now it's a long time that I work in this field and I work specifically on participation and participation is not only the structure of my work, but also the focus of my research is my content itself. So I learned that on... Uh, and I learn still from every single participant. So uh, the dignity of the people is, is the most important thing for me. And the empowering of people is, uh, is my main goal. So I, I learn also how to be flexible and how to understand also my role as artist, artist and activator of the process. Mm -hmm. So this, this role is, uh, is a double role and I must take care. Otherwise, it, I mean, I'm not interested in any project where the artist is demanding or uh, even providing instruction and the people are just material in his or her hands. I, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in an abusive role. I'm still, I'm really interested in making something from and raising together with our participants. So otherwise I will do another kind of, of work. Uh, and, and actually I do. So my ego or my uh, authoriality doesn't feel uh, prejudicated by this way to, to proceed. I feel that when I can activate the real process of particip participation in the creative uh, project, I think that I am not failing actually. I would fail and I would disappoint too many people if my behavior would be different. Mm -hmm. I really have to say what was so special for, for me hearing your symphony for the first time. Um, during the time I spent in Ljubljana, I had a memory and an impression for every single sound I collected. And also um, I knew every single sound that we received by email um, or SMS. And so I thought it's, it's impossible to bring all these sounds that are so special in themselves together. Um, and I think you, you did that quite beautifully because you managed to, when, when I heard the symphony for the first time, it really felt like a stroll through Ljubljana, mm -hmm. hearing the single contributions, but also having the impression of a collective city soundtrack. Um, and that sort of really surprised me that this was possible and that like, I could still like value every single encounter that I had but also have this, this impression of, um, of the whole city in music. Yeah, and it's, it's so beautiful to 
to understand, to, to imagine that so many people don't know each other, but they create something collectively. And of course, the composer Emiliano Brande is very good in this kind of, of melting pot, let's say. And maybe uh, we, we are all good in something and maybe we, we try to to, to make the best with our personal uh, vocation. And uh, for me, it's to restitute as the, this idea of a group and a choir of voices in a lot of senses was the most important focus. Um, that's why I think that even in, uh, uh, in such dramatic time, uh, people can feel community, even temporary community, of course, just based on the fact that they join a creative process together. But I, I strongly believe in this possibility, and I know that it's possible to experience that. So even more curious about how people will react. The fact for me is important that every single uh, participant realize that the sound is there and it, it wasn't cut, no? so they can uh, clearly understand that their contribution is, is in the final piece, but also uh, be surprised by how amazingly they can be melt into something different uh, uh, just with the sound that it comes right after or before yours. So uh, this is uh, pretty emotional, I guess, for, for a lot of people, especially in my experience, especially all the people or people not connected uh, because different, uh, um, because the occasion of life were different or whatever, not connected with contemporary art and especially with sound art at all. So they can really enjoy it in any case and perceive that they are part of something bigger. Mm. Yeah, I just want to come back to the word activate that you use, Marinella, because I think so many different things were activated. Um, you know, the, the different moments that Eva described, the, 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 the move from the individual to the collective, which, which came in the composition. But also, I mean, in normal circumstances, you know, you would have gone to Ljubljana, we would have had a premiere of the piece there. Yeah. Um, but because of the circumstances, we had to find other ways of, you know, activating this. And so we've invited uh, students um, to respond in a visual way to, um, to the musical piece. And uh, we don't have those yet at the moment that we speak, but, um, you know, th they're coming. And so there's a sense in which in many different imaginations, a sort of chain of uh, thinking together yes. has been activated. Um, and that's, that's kind of quite magical too, that uh, many different people have the opportunity to respond um, and express themselves uh, through what you began with this idea of a sound. Yes, actually I find extremely interesting to uh, proceed with different languages and new possibility of narration. That's exactly what I was referring when I talk, spoke about uh, generating new contents in this time. So I find this idea absolutely fantastic and I really wish that a lot of people will, will join because on a visual level the, the project can be enhanced even more and something that me and other people initiated can, can be developed and the potentiality of this development is almost infinitely limited. So this is fantastic and it's also something that it's great to re-give to, uh, re to the same community. No? So, and, and people activated by other people, it's exactly what uh, a community could mean nowadays. Uh, even uh, in such circumstances, even in the difficulty of relationship and the social gathering, but feeling in contact with people, this is something that is becoming more and more visible, the contact among people. And we realize that we don't, we miss it, when we don't have, <laughs> and, and now I'm, I'm absolutely sure that community-based projects, participatory projects, and uh, relational art will be increased and increased more and more because 
people are re realizing, possibly for the very first time, how important this is. And everybody is doing in their own way. I mean, there is not a receipt for that and not a formula, but it's extremely uh, intriguing to imagine what can happen next. Mm. And just to, to kind of round up, um, I mean, it's really wonderful to hear about this idea of, um, you know, these temporary communities that are created through a process of, um, of, of art. And um, I'm thinking about what is your feeling and your, your sense of this bigger community that we're all part of, Europe, Europe's Kitchen, the European Union, is uh, part of why we are doing this, of course, uh, with the German presidency, which is coming to an end in December. But this has been a very testing time for this community as a whole, um, this transnational community. And I wondered if you had some thoughts on that. Of course, first of all, the metaphor of the kitchen is perfect because it's exactly there where uh, you experiment also and you put together and you mix. And so I, I find it, absolutely appropriate and very beautiful also because it allows me to imagine that I can fail and uh, having the possibility to fail within uh, our own terms not as the society imposes to us failing is a concept that it should be explored as deceleration uh, uh, all this, uh, this concept, in my opinion, sh should be addressed in uh, cultural uh, um, uh, uh, situations. And secondly, I think that one of the most important uh, issues that I face working uh, uh, around the world for so many years, involving millions of people in my project, and listen to them about the life and the experiences and what is missing and what is not, it's the lack of belonging. And this lack of belonging can be addressed the creating the containers for things to happen, creating, creating environment, physical or not, for things to happen. So this is my very humble response, but I strongly believe in the powerful uh, creation of these umbrellas under which we can develop uh, and experiment ourselves. So I embrace this kind of initiative because they, uh, they result extremely important for people to identify, okay, there is a possibility there for encounter, for meeting, for sharing, for um, giving, providing, and taking. So all, all this uh, without context context without umbrellas without containers we, we can use a lot of terms for that it's really really difficult for people they feel lost in the confusion of information and the flow of things that surround us at the day mm. so so for you the, these possibilities to create belonging in other ways are they do they help to somehow express this idea of european unity in a different way or do you just do you, do you rather see that the uh, how does this connect to that broader sense of a of a belonging in you know under this very big umbrella no i think that the creating possibility for people to express and to be visible in a lot of ways not only physical not only gathering physically in a place but know that there are these opportunities where i can express myself when i can generate new concepts where i can tell you about me and i can listen about others in so many ways i think this generated the sense of belonging to each other and maybe there is something more than the boundaries that we face every day so uh, Community within communities. This is the, the, the real ingredient for me. So small circles that become more visible uh, within a bigger circle. Uh, at least that's the, also the feedback that I receive from a thousand of participants around the world, especially in Europe. So this, this occasion, we miss occasion to stay together and to imagine a flow of information and communication and sharing of things. So definitely this can ov overcome a lot of boundaries and, uh, and the difficulties that objectively we face every day.